Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're taking a look at hard drive research and the alternate recipes that are in the game. We're going to go through each tier of the game and talk about which alternate recipes are the most valuable or the things you're going to want to prioritize as you unlock hard drives while you play. Let's get into it. Now, When you first get the MAM, you'll be able to find a hard drive at drop pods around the map. After researching these hard drives in the MAM, you'll be then be given a choice of two alternate recipes chosen randomly from a pool of available alternates. If you choose one of these, you'll unlock that recipe for use in your machines, and the other one goes back into the pool and can be found from another hard drive later. You can also choose not to select a recipe, and both will remain in your hard drive library, where you won't be able to use them, but you can then select them at any time at your leisure. This will allow you to sort of bank these unwanted recipes in order to improve the likelihood of finding a more valuable recipe later on. It will also allow you to create a library of recipes that you can use as soon as one of them suits your needs. Additionally, the pool of available recipes is determined by what tier of the game you're in and how much research you've done. So hard drives used earlier on in the game are more likely to grant early game recipes while they're highly relevant. With all that said, there are more hard drives available than there are alternates, so you can be sure you'll get them all if you want to spend enough time searching. Let's take a look at all the notable recipes in each tier. Now when you first unlock the man, there are three recipes available to you straight away, and all of them are S tier. First up we have cast screws, which removes a processing step in the screw production chain, allowing them to be made directly from iron ingots. This simplifies production early on and uses 60% less power per screw than the default recipe. In the early game, when you're still on biomass, every megawatt counts, so this is a solid recipe worth grabbing straight away, and you'll probably end up using it throughout the game. The next recipe is Iron Wire, and this may actually be the best overall alternate recipe in the entire game. It allows you to produce wire, and therefore cable, from iron instead of copper, so it trades a more rare resource of copper for a more common one of iron. Now this pairs nicely with recipes throughout the game and allows several components to be made from pure iron instead of requiring a blend of copper and iron. Motors are a, a big example of this. There are several other recipes that are also affected by this. Crystal oscillators, computers, SAM fluctuators, and a whole bunch more. So this is a massive recipe. I would recommend picking it up as soon as you're seeing it. It's definitely one you're gonna wanna hang on to. Finally, instead of a recipe, there's an inventory expansion available from the beginning as well, which will grant six inventory spots straight away, right when they're most needed. Therefore, I recommend finding at least three hard drives before you unlock any tier two milestones and getting these three recipes while they're the only ones in the pool. I've made a guide to where you can find drop pods near each starting area. I'll post a link to that in the description below. Now in tier two, we start to see some recipes you may not want to take straight away. Again, the best way to deal with these is to simply not select a recipe and let it sit in your library. If it comes up that that recipe would be useful to you, you can always pick it up. Otherwise, it's safely removed from the pool and you can focus on looking for more useful ones now. The best recipe is one that solves a problem you have right now. Now tier two only unlocks a few recipes and only one of these is really exceptional. That's the stitched iron plate, but it does require the iron wire to fully utilize it. The iron wire and stitched iron plate pairing allows you to create the reinforced iron plates faster and more efficiently than the default recipes allow. If you don't have the iron wire alternate, this one drops down to about a B tier recipe or so, still becomes useful later on, but you don't necessarily need it straight away. Now the bolted frame and bolted iron plate recipes are uh, more efficient and produce more items than the default recipes, but they have huge logistics requirements. They actually require Mark III belts to fully supply. So I don't usually see this as a big priority during the early stage of the game. Copper rotors should probably be avoided. They also require Mark III belts to supply and make logistics significantly more complicated. Now this is also where you're generally gonna start seeing some recipes from other research trees in the MAM start to pop up. Of these, fused wire and fused quick wire pair really nicely together if you need both wire and quick wire in one place. There are no recipes that require both of those until tier six, so it's okay to bank those until they become more useful. Caterium wire may also be useful early on if you happen to have some spare caterium nearby, but the rest of the MAM unlocks are probably best to hold off on. Now this may also be where you start to see the pure ingot recipes for caterium, copper, or iron. These are really useful recipes later in the game. But even though you can see them at tier three, you can't use them until tier five. So I recommend sitting on them for a while. When you get into the very late stages of the game, they become tremendously valuable because you need tons and tons of resources. And this is one of the most efficient ways to extend your raw resources into larger amounts. But early on, there's not much call for them. 
In tier three, the best recipe we have is solid steel ingots, which increases your steel yield by 50%, but requires you to pre-smelt the iron ore into iron ingots before sending it into a foundry. Even so, it still ends up being cheaper on power per item produced, and the 50% yield and output is massive. Next up, we have the iron pipe, which uses significantly more iron, but no coal to make steel pipe. It effectively trades one and a half coal for two and a half iron. Now, coal has a variety of other uses for things like power generation or explosives. So this is a solid trade. And the iron pipe recipe also opens up logistics to factories throughout the rest of the game. You can do things like make motors from pure iron and remove coal from the production chain for heavy modular frames. This is a great one to have in your pocket even if you won't use it all the time. The alloy ingot recipes are great if you're looking to stretch your iron and copper a bit further and work especially well in tandem using both to complement one or the other as part of the same factory. The same is true for the molded beams and molded steel pipes which allow you to pair concrete with steel ingots in order to create steel beams and steel pipes more efficiently than the default recipe would allow. So you can use these if you want to push your steel production even further. Now the molded rest also have an interesting look to them because you're going to need concrete and steel in the same place for encased industrial beams in tier four as well. So these can be valuable if you have limited resources or like the idea of trading a more complex factory for, for extra outputs. The steel rotor recipe is another big winner here, this, and this is one that I look for straight away. The big draw of it is that it makes rotors and stators use the same components, which greatly simplifies motor production. And that's doubly true if you can also pair it with iron wire and iron pipe, which is how you get the motors out of pure iron. Now in tier three, we also see some questionable recipes. Bio coal and charcoal both have a use, but they both require manual gathering of biomass. And so I usually lock these away and forget about them. One of the big ideas of tier three is automating power production, and these are a step backward in that regard. You can also get wet concrete and steam copper sheets here which are both excellent recipes in their own time, but they require refineries, so you can't even use them until tier five, and they don't have significant value until tier seven when you start to look at aluminum and then later on nuclear production. Late in the game, wet concrete is especially valuable since it gives you an effective way to sink excess water by pairing it with limestone, which is found almost anywhere around the map. But if you see these come up early on, you can safely leave them on the back burner. Tier 4 stars the encased industrial pipe recipe, which lets you make encased industrial beams out of steel pipes instead of steel beams. This is more efficient, and pairing it with iron pipe also lets you eliminate coal from that production chain. This one is worth grabbing, but the rest of the Tier 4 alternates are probably safe to sit on. Automated speed wiring and rigor motor recipes can be valuable later. They're both especially efficient, but require manufacturers to use and are significantly more complicated than their default recipes. The quickwire stator is a stator alternate that uses quickwire instead of wire. If you find yourself with spare quickwire, this isn't bad and it's more efficient than the default, but it still feels a bit lackluster. It doesn't really bring anything special to the table. Now tier five introduces a huge number of new recipes, but the big winner is a combination that starts with the heavy oil residue recipe. You can pair this with diluted fuel, which is a tier seven recipe or diluted packaged fuel in tier five, and then recycled rubber and plastic. This combination can increase your oil refinement yields by over 300% and is a key part of the big builds in and is a key part if you want to do big builds in the mid to late games. The only downside is that you need multiple recipes for them to shine and since there are so many other recipes unlocked here as well, you'll need a ton of hard drives in order to make sure you get them all. Now again, the diluted fuel recipe is actually a tier 7 recipe and requires the blender, but there is a a version of it that you unlock in tier five, that's the diluted packaged fuel version. It has the same throughput by way of input and output resources, but just require uh, some modified production steps. Now turbo fuel is also opened up at this stage and you can use the turbo heavy fuel alternate if you want to use that. This is less efficient than using the diluted, the diluted fuel recipes to produce fuel and then producing turbo fuel from that. Uh, but it is quite a bit simpler if you don't have those recipes available to you. Lastly, there are two recipes that allow you to make a little bit better use of the byproducts from your oil refineries. That's the coke steel ingot and the electrode circuit board. Coke steel ingot lets you use petroleum coke instead of coal to make steel ingots, and the electrode circuit board uses rubber and petroleum coke to produce circuit boards. The electrode circuit board pairs especially nicely with Caterium computers in tier six, so it's worth taking a look at for that production line. Now tier six only has a few recipes, and the two that you'll want to look out for are the heavy encased frame and Caterium computer. Caterium computer paired with the electrode circuit board allows you to make computers from only Caterium and crude oil. And there are several places around the map where these nodes are located right next to each other, which makes for easy logistics in a simple factory. 
The heavy encased frame is another winner, which removes screws from the heavy modular frames recipe. And if you pair it with the iron pipe and encased industrial pipe alternates, it'll allow you to make heavy modular frames from just iron and limestone. Now, the heavy modular frames are still a complex recipe, especially at scale, but it's hugely valuable to be able to make them so easily and from such common components. You Blueprints can help simplify this and allow you to define an entire production chain within a single blueprint that produces only a small number of items, but that you can then replicate instantly and chain them together to create whatever scale factor you need. It's also worth noting that another inventory expansion opens up with the industrial manufacturing milestone, so be sure to pick that one up when you see it. Now, Tier 7 has tons of useful recipes. The sloppy alumina and pure aluminum ingot alternate recipes pair to greatly simplify aluminum production. So those are highly desirable right out of the gate. Together, they eliminate silica from the aluminum production chain and also simplify water management. So these are ones I seek out in every playthrough. The all clad casing is also great if you're creating casings and sheets in the same factory, since you'll already have the component logistics in place and it's significantly more efficient than the default recipe. The instant scrap recipe is a hugely efficient way to produce aluminum well and works really well as part of a battery factory where you're already going to have all the components in place, but isn't much useful elsewhere as sulfur tends to be at a premium given its role in power production. In terms of power, the diluted fuel recipe is unlocked in tier 7 and as mentioned is a, a massive part of both late game power production as well as working in tandem with your recycled plastic and recycled rubber recipes. The turbo fuel blend recipe is also unlocked as part of tier seven, which is the most efficient way to produce turbo fuel. Now, by the time you get into tier eight, nearly every alternate has a purpose and is worth grabbing. So at this point, if you haven't yet, it's worth setting out to gather up any remaining hard drives around the map. There are a few of note, however. The infused uranium cell and uranium fuel unit are significantly more efficient than the defaults for uranium fuel production, so I highly re recommend you seek these out before you build your first nuclear power plant. The infused uranium cell allows you to only ship in solid components, while the default recipe requires sulfuric acid, and the uranium fuel unit allows you to triple the amount of fuel you get out of uranium, while only being marginally more complex of a factory. I'll post a link in, in the description to a power plant build that uses these recipes to give a sense of how they pair, but it really is a fantastic combination. The other alternates that stand out in this tier are the electric motor and the electric turbo motor, which somewhat simplify turbo motor production by eliminating the need for nitrogen and oil products in exchange for cotarium, copper, and iron. All of the tier nine recipes are used to provide alternate production lines for a few endgame products, so they're good to bank up and unlock as needed to expand your diamond or dark matter crystal production. The only recipes that really stand out are the dark iron fuel recipe, as that allows you to create the highest yield type of fuel in the game from production chain that's on par with a mid tier seven instead of the eldritch nightmares that haunt the rest of tier nine and dark matter crystallization, which is even simpler and gives you dark matter crystals out of SAM through just two production steps. This is a welcome respite when you're working on Fixonium and AI expansion servers. And that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys have found this discussion of the alternate recipes in Satisfactory helpful. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Dakoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.